everyone welcome back to real estate on the cheap mini challenge my name is nev and i am beyond excited that you are here thank you so much for watching and make sure that you do subscribe because this is not the end of it we're continuing on if this is your first video that you somehow stumbled upon make sure you watch the previous ones because things are going to make more sense when you start from the beginning as opposed to somewhere in the middle just like any good book if you just open in the middle of it, it's not going to make a whole lot of sense because a lot of things happened prior to you realizing. So go to the beginning and then watch in. And of course, you will come to this video. If you've been following all along, I welcome you back and I'm excited that you are here. Now, it's time to talk about these auctions because we talked about that most of these deals are being sold through the auctions. So it's time to start focusing and talking a little bit about it. And here is going to be an interesting piece is, do you know yourself? Ah, that's a good question. And of course you're like, but of course I do. When I see myself in the middle, of course I know it's me. Everybody knows me, even me. Some of you might be saying like, uh, no, not quite sure that I always know who I am. Thank you very much. But that's not what we're talking about here. Part of it is how do you deal under pressure? Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. So this, I was actually thinking, do I put this in the mindset? Do I not put it in a mindset? But you know what? We're kind of making it fluid over here as it goes. And I think it makes sense to talk about it now. Most of these deals are done through the auctions, as I mentioned. Some of the auctions are going to be in person. Some of them are going to be online. And some of them are going to be mail-in auctions. Now, let's talk about the mail-in because there's not much happening there. So, of course, you'll find a deal and you basically write down of what you're willing to pay. And then it's a sealed bid and you just send it off. And you have no clue what's going on. Uh, you know, you don't know if you're the only person that is bidding on it. You don't know if there's like thousand people bidding on it. You don't know if you bid low. You don't know if you bid high. You have no clue whatsoever. The interesting piece about the mail-in bids is that they will take the highest one. Now, here's the part that gets very interesting and kind of strategic. If you think you are going to be the only person bidding on a property, then it makes sense to bid at the starting bid amount. So if the starting bid is thousand bucks, you put in thousand or thousand and one, send it in and that's that. Now, if you're not quite sure and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know, somebody might bid like $10,000, but I really want it and it's valuable, I'm going to put $15,000 and say you're the only one. Well, guess what? The price is going to be $15,000, even if you're the only one. So it's a bit interesting. You can't watch it. You don't know what's happening, but it can be nerve wracking to do it. The second one is the online auction. Uh, some of them are done kind of live through the video, although not very many. Mostly it's just a website and you see what the current bid is and you put in your amount. And it's very similar to like if you've ever bid on anything on eBay, for example, it's very similar to that. Um, you put in and then you get notified if you're a winning bidder or not and kind of follow that process now the live auctions are very very interesting or even the phone auctions are very interesting because of course you have to register as a bidder uh, sometimes they will require that you bring some proof of funds before you can participate uh, most of these they do have some sort of um, entry uh, fee that you have to send in. Sometimes those fees are very low. Uh, sometimes they're kind of high. Um, it's not always known, but be prepared that in order to even participate in an auction, you'll have to send the money in. Now, before you freak out about, I'm just sending money, but I'm not even saying buying anything they just want to make sure that you actually have some money in it and if you bid on something and end up being a winning bidder but you don't fulfill and pay the rest of it and they might actually keep your money so that's what they call a skin in the game when you get into these auctions it's actually kind of cool you probably watch some of the stuff on uh, on on like youtube or or tv where they go in and bid some of the stuff and uh, they will go in and say all right well we have property number one two three four five located at five six seven eight whatever right and they will say starting bid starts at a thousand dollars and then, of course, you have all these people that are interested in, you know, lot number, blah, blah, blah. So you want to make sure that you know 
which property you're interested in. So you want to do a research before then. And then you want to be very careful. Now, I talk with my hands a lot and I have to be very careful when I do these because any nod, uh, you know, any random stuff, and they might actually think that you are bidding. So make sure that you are being very, very careful. Make sure that you're also like, you know, because some people are just like, that's that's their signal. That's their signal. That's their signal. Like, they do weird stuff, right? So you want to make sure that you're being very careful about your head movements, about your nodding, about your hands. So for me, it's kind of tough to go into live auctions because I'll be like, oh, yeah, woo, good deal, right? But I will go like this and they will think I'm bidding up. I'm not bidding. No, no, no. <laughs> Anyways, you need to understand yourself and who you are and how you deal under pressure. Now, here is an interesting component to also understand is the clock will start ticking, whether you are in live or online auction. And of course, there's always a strategy. You don't know what I'm going to bid. I don't know what you're going to bid. You have no clue what I'm interested in. I have no clue what you're interested in. And here's the interesting piece. There might be parts where somebody might be interested in, say, particular uh, property, but maybe that property is no longer available, or maybe it sold above the price, or maybe way well below, and now they have extra money left. And so, while they weren't originally interested in it, they might become interested as we move along. Now, I've also seen it with some of the individuals who maybe didn't do as much of a research, but they see so many people bidding, they were like, I missed something. This has to be a great deal. I need to go in and bid it. Uh, do what you want, but my recommendation is don't do that. You know, if if you are if you are uncertain of what it is, I I don't recommend doing it again. You could end up with a great thing. You could end up with a horrible thing. Uh, the hard part is you just don't know. And so for me, the recommendation is take it for whatever is worth. Is do your due diligence before you make a decision whether you're going to get bit or not. People get caught up in a moment and these are highly emotional events, especially if you have a heart set on something and you see everybody else bidding and now you're like, oh, no, I set my price to be 5000 and now it's 5100 It's only $100 more. Fine, I'll do it. And now it's like bidding, bidding, bidding. And it's, oh, no, I'm not bidding. Oh, I'm not winning. Now it's like 50 Okay, well, I said 55,000 and it was only 5,100. So, I mean, the difference really, we're talking about 200 bucks. I can do that. So now you can see how very quickly and easily you can get yourself into a lot of trouble in some of these. My recommendation always do your due diligence, do your research, understand what you're buying, understand what your maximum amount is that you're going to put in, and then stick with it. Stick with it. Stick with it. All right. So I'm trying to get you to understand that you get caught up in a moment and it's very, very easy to blow through the money you didn't even anticipate you're going to buy. And sometimes you end up paying way more than you should have. Way more than you know you can afford. Way more than you're comfortable with and way more than you wanted your return to be. Same goes for tax liens, for example. If I go into an auction, I'm saying I'm not taking anything below 7% because I know that I can make 7% and, um, you know, or, or less in something else that I don't have to hold for as long and uncertain period of time. Don't get caught up in it and start getting in. The moment it hits below 7, I'm out. Okay. The moment it goes above my set price, I'm out. And it's easier said than done. I can promise you that much. Because again, you start playing these mind games. I don't know if you've ever done it, but I know I definitely have. When you go in, as I talked about it, you set your price of what it's going to be, and then it's only 100 bucks or only 200 bucks or only 50 bucks. And you're like, well, you know, what's. And, and then you start to justify things to yourself, right? You're going like, well, 50 bucks, I mean, that's that's like, you know, I mean, that's that's like a, a nice lunch or maybe like a, you know, dinner or whatever. I, I'll skip one of those. This is really important. I should definitely do this because I believe in myself and I can make money from it. So I should definitely do this. 
But the problem is that it's 50 by 50 by 50 that adds up. So you need to understand how do you react in these moments. The other piece that when we see with the online auction, similar to what you likely see on eBay, is that the auction will go and there's going to be a moment in time when it starts. So say it starts like right now. And there's going to be a few people that are going to bid. And then if it lasts, say, for like three days, at the first, there's some action. And then typically, like, dies off and there's nothing happening. And then we come towards the end of the auction and then boom. I mean, offers start kind of coming in. And meanwhile, you were like, I was winning. What the heck is going on now? Like, I, what? Sometimes it can also go into overtime. If there's a lot of activities, they might go into overtime and provide additional time if you want to put in any more money. So say that auction ends right now and I was the highest bidder up until this point, but I, you know, somebody just outbid me in the last second of it, you know, um, and now sometimes, not always, but sometimes they will give me an opportunity if I want to overbid it. Sometimes they will also put in the highest and best, as they call it, which is basically an opportunity for everybody to put in whatever they can. Um, again, that goes a little bit into that blind auction that we talked about at the beginning where you don't know what everybody's going to put in. Everybody puts in the best that they can absolutely do. And then the people that are auctioneers as they're called they're going to open it up and then sell it to the highest bidder and you're not going to know if it's you or not sometimes they will just go into this overtime where you kind of bid it up for a little bit more and that can take a little bit of extra time not always but we've seen it sometimes happen as well so for you the next piece is is uh, go out there to some sort of bid on ebay it doesn't matter what it is it doesn't even matter if you're going to buy it. it doesn't even matter if you're going to bid but need to understand how do you act in pressure do you come up with excuses do your palms sweat do you get kind of nervous and start to walk yourself, talk yourself out of it or talk yourself into it? Do you start to panic when everybody else seems excited about something? Do you get excited about it? You don't even know why. You can't explain it. Did you do your homework? Do you know what the value of the property is? Do you know what you could potentially sell it at? And what does your return on investment need to be in order for you to make this into a profitable business or profitable venture if that's what you decided to do? All of those questions, I can't answer for you. You're the only person that can do it. And the other part is that if you are doing this again as part of the family thing or part of with the spouse, make sure that both of you talk it and that you find who's the responsible one in this venture. Who's the one that kind of talk me off of the ledge? So all of those pieces you need to have in mind as well as the amount of money that you can pay. Please do note one thing, that when you go in and bid on these things, and if you are a winning bidder, you need to pay up. If you cannot afford it, you likely will be financially penalized and you might get kicked out of these auctions for some time of period, period of time, and sometimes it's for forever. So if this is something you want to do, I highly recommend don't go and bid if you're not really interested to buy and don't bid into something that you don't know. But again, these are just suggestions. I cannot tell you what to do. Sometimes we can't even tell ourselves what to do. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching. If this is helpful to you and opening up your eyes about how these things work, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, notification, leave comments in the section, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.